when things are going bad, don't get all bummed out, don't get startled, don't get frustrated. If you can say the word good, guess what? It means you're still alive. It means you're still breathing. And if you're still breathing, well, then hell, you still got some fight left in you. So get up, dust off, reload, recalibrate, re-engage, and go out on the attack. Hey guys, and welcome back to another Iron Will podcast with me, Shane Warner, and John Chase. So what this podcast is all about is we are trying to get stories from people that have been through a traumatic experience in their lives and came out a different person. Yeah, they have all created an iron will. So what is an iron will? A burning determination that cannot be stopped or hindered by anything. Willing to do anything to get a desired outcome. Extremely resilient. So what we like to say is we like to say, just keep punching. (laughs) <laughs> yeah so sit back and relax and we're gonna start the show so today we have a really awesome person on the podcast with us her name is nicole beach and she was my contact with origin maine for the iron Will virtual 5k since that time i started following her on instagram at Nicole underscore origin. We had a really good conversation about jujitsu, business, and just life in general. Thank you for the fun conversation, Nicole. So you yeah. live in Farmington, Maine, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. And so last name Beach, and I never thought I would be living in <laughs> in snow country. Oh, yeah. you you moved there. From I did, yeah. So where did you originally live? I grew up in the D.C. area. Oh. So I was in the oh, suburbs okay. outside of Maryland for most of my childhood, teenage years. Uh, stayed in Maryland for college and then ended up in Ohio for about seven years. Hmm. Found jujitsu, yeah. and then found Origin. Yeah, that's um, awesome. So um, you started working for origin after they were already a company you know okay and so um when did you get involved with them so i was probably only training for about a year i think i was a two-stripe white belt and i was in the office helping my academy with a little bit of their marketing and in walked brian littlefield okay and brian came in and said working with this company called Origin. Here's what they're doing. They're making these in America. And he gave us a little history lesson on manufacturing Mm -hmm. and gis and showed us some pretty unique designs for how the gi was innovated by Pete and the crew up here in Origin. Mm. And so I learned about the company and he said, you know what, we're doing a wholesale program, showed us all the gear, showed us the prices we trained and, uh, after that, we had kind of this level of excitement over it being made in the U.S. Yeah. Year. That, that and, it, that's really important. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it was so unique. It was something that I guess being new to jujitsu or, you know, I'm not sure if it was the same experience for everybody when they first hear about origin. But for me, it was a history lesson. Mm. And it educated me about manufacturing and about how manufacturing left the U.S. Yeah. And yeah, then sure. also gave me an education on geese. I mean, I, I was wearing them every day and training, never really thought to look at the label, mm-hmm. didn't know there was an option. And I was actually struggling with the way the pants were designed. Mm-hmm. A lot of gee pants, most of them actually um, have a drawstring. Oh, yeah. And it's awkward. Mm-hmm. It doesn't Just stay. uncomfortable. You know, my kids were training and with kids, you're always having to retie their, their pants. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and so as an adult, I mean, I was frustrated enough with it that when I saw the origin pants, tried them on, I'm like, this is it. I don't want to fuss with those other things mm-hmm. anymore. Yeah. Um, and so I got into my first pair of origin 
uh, pants, the pro pants. I got into my first Origin Gi, quickly ordered a second. I think we sold 30 in our academy in that very first order with Brian. Oh, that's awesome. And so I became a fan of the product first. Mm -hmm. So Um, you were just a wholesaler before? Yeah. Yeah, I was a wholesaler before I started running wholesale. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So I know what it's like. You know, it, it helps me in my job to understand what it's like to run an academy, to have new students walk in the door, try mm-hmm. to convince them to put on these funny looking pajamas and roll around <laughs> on the mat. And when you can show them a quality product and you can show them, um, you know, the, the fit and the feel mm-hmm. in a gi that doesn't feel as awkward and uncomfortable. Right. Yeah. They and overall feel better about training. I've heard Jocko say about jujitsu that, or I've heard multiple people say this same thing, but um, that nerds, nerdy people excel in jujitsu or not necessarily <laughs> nerdy people, but <laughs> smart people and, and people that think outside the box are really excel in jujitsu because that's like the whole point of jujitsu um, from the little tiny bit that I know about it is you like you never know like strength it's not just strength. yeah there's a lot of strategy yes right? yeah. yeah exactly and that's yeah. actually actually what I personally love about it and you know Jocko absolutely right I mean he's he's been doing the sport longer than I knew it, it even existed but the the thing that's nice about jujitsu for a lot of people is that it's the mind and body. Mm. Game. Oh yeah. Yeah. That element of having to engage your mind in the activity as intensely as you do in jujitsu, it, it serves a lot of purposes. It helps sure. you make that connection. You know, I feel sharper than mm-hmm. I did probably when I was in my teenage years playing soccer. Yeah. yeah. I feel more aware, better body control, I feel more, it's, it's not just that I'm older and wiser now or, you know, whatever you want to say, um, but the repeated exercise of doing a mind and body focused activity like jujitsu, mm-hmm. it just changes things. My, my level of alertness and awareness of my actions physically yeah, yeah. and That's mentally, it, it's a different level, if you will. Um, and you the, treat other people differently. Like, if yeah, you, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. because you're, um, martial arts are kind of like teaching you that the best thing you can do is not get in a, in a fight. Um, exactly. Mm-hmm. I think some of the scariest people that I've ever met <laughs> as far as how able they are mm-hmm. to be a physical threat. Are yeah. Some of the nicest, most humble down to earth. Oh yeah. People. Mm-hmm. When you have the skill and technique to be able to, to, you know, control another human being the way that you can with jujitsu mm-hmm. technique, right? Yeah. You know that you don't have to. You know where those boundaries yeah. are. You yeah. don't. You don't act and react out of fear. There are a lot of different elements from jujitsu that you can absolutely apply to your daily life, mm-hmm. and I think that level of confidence also directly connects to a level of being humble. You know, deflating your ego. A lot of the things that Jocko mm. talks about and that we practice at Origin related to leadership and extreme ownership and, you know, deflating your ego, being able to calmly approach situations without emotion. Yeah. All of those lessons you learn on the mats as well mm-hmm. because you'll see that bigger, stronger guy who maybe wrestled in college and he comes into jujitsu and has somebody half his size. Mm-hmm. Yeah, can throw submit. them around. Yep. Yeah. Um, these types of activities on a regular basis, when you regularly have to admit that somebody is yeah. going to break it's your like arm being or humbled. choke you unconscious. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's you like humbled being humbled mat. every time you go in onto the mat. Yeah, that's great. And then for other folks, you know, because I I wasn't that college wrestler guy who, you know, had some physical um experiences and in, in athleticism i played soccer but it was never in a position of dominating another mm-hmm. human being i yeah. had no grappling experience you know i i was completely new to it and so for me what i was able to get to was the confidence in mm-hmm. knowing that i can defend myself yeah um, that is great the lessons on the mats that teach you about 
being humble and ego, you know, they came into play for me a little bit later, you know, mm-hmm. when I thought I knew something in jujitsu mm-hmm. <laughs> and yeah. then had to be reminded to be humble, you know, I'm, I'm just a purple belt. And, you know, there are definitely times where somebody brand new to jujitsu, they can come in, uh, maybe some wrestling experience, grappling experience, or, or maybe they just learn quicker and faster than I do. Um, they mm-hmm. could come in and, and do a move and absolutely make it. Oh, happen. yeah. Kill it. Um, sure. So while you have different levels of you know experience, background, belt ranking, and everything in jiu-jitsu, the constant lesson, even all the way up to black belts, you'll have black belts tell you that they're white belt students yeah. and catch them in a submission. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And so it's it's a unique thing that at least I haven't experienced outside of jiu-jitsu. Yeah. Um, can you, it's, it's, can you kind of explain the belt belt for jujitsu? Sure. Um, in general, most academies are going from a white belt um, in the adult ranks. They'll go from a white belt to a blue belt, mm-hmm. uh, then to a purple belt, brown and black. Okay. And a lot of folks in jujitsu will tell you um, that when you get to black belt, you finally start to understand how to better learn yeah. for mm-hmm. jujitsu. Interesting. Yeah. Um, you'll have people kind of compare it to when you first start you're just learning the letters yeah mm-hmm. and i wish i knew where to attribute this this quote or analogy <laughs> but it'll say that you you know you're just starting to learn the letters then you start to be able to put words together yeah you know purple belt i'm i'm supposed to be able to make sentences hopefully make <laughs> phrases and sentences <laughs> when you get to brown belt uh, you know, you're able to put full sentences and paragraphs together and then black belt is poetry. Yeah. Um, yeah and yeah. it's just a, another way of, of explaining the different levels to it. Um, the interesting thing for me, I guess, especially for where I am with my jujitsu is there are people who know how to bait and trap you mm. into something, you know, where you might think you have a move coming up. You've maybe learned how to chain together two or three moves Mm -hmm. and you're, you're focused or, or ready to to progress to the next thing and they'll throw a curveball. Yeah. Yeah, Then they'll be able to defend. Yeah. No way. And one of my favorite, I was, um, I guess I started in a health and Gracie Academy. And so one of my favorite quotes um, from him is that explaining jujitsu is this, I do that. I do that. And so because of that constant puzzle, I yeah, why they refer forth. to it as human chess. Yeah, yeah. Well, because of that element, I found it to be a really, really cathartic, you know, activity, yeah. hobby, because I couldn't focus on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the other beautiful thing about jujitsu, like, um, it's all on you if you get hurt. Like, you can tap or um, whatever, or you could not tap yeah, and yeah. get really hurt. Yep, yep. <laughs> and that's the right. two choices, really. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's an activity where you really learn to trust your training partners. I think that's mm-hmm. why there are so many great relationships in jujitsu. Not only is a great, you know, um, activity to help relieve stress, you know, sure. physical activity, right? Yep. Giving you, um, giving you that that community of people who you learn to trust. Um, in some cases, absolutely are trusting them with their life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, if somebody holds a chokehold, tap and check the tap. Yeah. If they're, you know, it's it's the kind of activity that you you develop that bond really out of necessity. You can't train jujitsu without trusting your training partners. Yeah. And mm-hmm. they, for sure. they you know, could absolutely break your arm or choke mm-hmm. you at cho- choke you to death if they wanted to, but. Yeah, the beauty, beautiful part about jujitsu, like I said, it's just that you have the, it's all on you, like if, if you get hurt or anything like that. So, mm-hmm. yeah. uh, and it can it can sound very severe, but in in all, you know, reality, I'm okay. So as a female, <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm only like five. You know, <laughs> most academies I go into, and I've traveled and trained in more than fifty academies. And traveling by myself, you know, training, people might, you know, a lot of times they'll ask me, you know, do you feel safe traveling? Oh, yeah, of course, because you know jiu-jitsu. No, I, I feel safe traveling because the jiu-jitsu community is actually a very warm, welcoming, mm. inviting community. Mm, and as you guys referenced earlier, people who have 
technique 